In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use Affinity Designer version 2 to create this 3D text effect where everything here is vector and we have the appearance of 3D lettering with a light glare going off of it. Before we get started though, if you want to learn more about how Affinity Designer works, be sure to check out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where we go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work, kind of like how I'll do in this video. I'll have some information about that linked below if you want to check that out. And now that that's out of the way, let's get started. I'm going to open a new document by pressing Command N. And the page width and height, I'm just going to use 1920 by 1080. And I'll click Create. And now I'm going to create some text on my canvas. I'm going to grab my text tool and I'll click and drag to create a nice big letter like that. And I'll use all caps. And for this demonstration, I'm just going to use the word Designer. And the font that I'm going to use, I'm going to press Command-A to select all of the text. And the font that I'm using here is called Call of Ops. Call of Ops Duty 2. So this is a free font. If you want to download and install it, I will have a link to that in the description of the video. Just go ahead and download and install that. The good thing about Affinity Designer is you won't have to restart the application to load the font. It should load after it's installed. So go ahead and use that. This font works really well for what we're doing. And we want to put some spacing between those letters. So while you have everything selected, hold your Option key, or that would be your Alt key on Windows, and use your right arrow key and press that a few times to put some spacing between the letters. And that right there looks pretty good. So now I'll grab my Selection tool. I'm going to convert this to Curves now. I will go to Layer and select Convert to Curves. And it's going to create it into a group. And now we want to ungroup it. So we'll go to Layer and we'll select Ungroup All. And then we'll just merge them all together using this plus icon up here that says add when you hover your cursor over it. And now it is a single path. So let me grab my selection tool and I'm going to center this on the canvas vertically and horizontally. And now I'm going to apply some distortions to it. So I'll come down here to this little mesh icon that says warp and I will click on that. And the first one we're going to apply is quad. So I will select quad. And then I'm going to take this top line and just bring that up. And then I'll take this bottom line and bring that up as well so that we have this rounded, kind of like this bent or rounded effect. And now we will finalize that by going to Layer and selecting Convert to Curves. And now I'm going to apply another warp. So I will go back to the warp icon down here and I will choose Perspective this time. Uh, and what we're going to do next, we're going to need a vertical or a horizontal guide going under the bottom of the text here just to make sure that we're locking everything horizontally. So to get a guide, we first need to display the ruler on the canvas. So I'm going to press Command R, or if you're on Windows, that would be Control R, and we should get this, these rulers on the sides of the pages. And I'm just going to click and drag up here and bring this down and place that at the bottom of the text. And now you should be able to take this bottom part and just bring that across like that and make sure to hold your Shift key to lock it onto the horizontal axis. And then I'll do the same thing over here. I'll bring that across. In fact, because you can press Shift, you really don't need the horizontal ruler. So you could probably skip that part. Let me bring that out a little more. I'll do the same thing over here, just to make sure that they look even and balanced. And once you're happy with how that looks, you can go to Layer and select Convert to Curves. And now we can get rid of the ruler by pressing Command-R again. And you could toggle off the visibility of that guide by just pressing... Actually, no, you have to take the guide, click and drag it up to the top of the canvas so it's off the screen like that, and then it'll disappear. Now, my text looks a little elongated, so I'm going to hold the Command key and take this node over here on the right and bring this in like that, just to bring the text in a little bit. Sometimes it gets distorted a little too much when we apply these effects. And let me zoom out and again make sure that this gets centered back up on the page vertically and horizontally. So now what I will do is I will make a copy of this object. I'll come over here. If yours got made into a group like mine did here, this should be a single path. This shouldn't be a group. So let me just take this sub item down here and bring that out and then just take this empty group and press delete to get rid of that. Okay, you may have to do that two times like I just did right there. We want a single path. You notice notice the icon right here where it displays curves. We want one single path, otherwise what we're not going to do, otherwise what we're going to do next is not going to work. So ran into a little bit of a glitch there. That's how you can get around it if you run into the same problem. I'm going to right-click this and go to Duplicate. 
I'll make the duplicate copy white and then I'll select the copy beneath it and I will grab the contour tool, which is over here. And I will take this handle up top and just bring this out like that. And if you notice, we have rounded corners there. We want sharp corners. So I'll come over here to the contour type and I'll choose this middle option that says miter join or the corner option. And then I will continue adjusting this as needed. Okay, that right there looks pretty good. And now I'm going to finalize this appearance by clicking the button up here that says bake appearance. And now I wanna fill in these holes over here. If you notice the letter E and the letter E, there's that negative space in there. We wanna fill all of that in. If you have this something similar happening with your letters, depending on the word that you typed out and the letters you used, just come up here to layer, go to geometry and choose fill holes and that'll take care of that. So now I'm gonna create some copies of this border. So what I will do is I'm going to zoom in up top over here where this center handle is and I'm going to hold my option key and that would be your alt key on windows and then click and drag down and then hold shift and then bring this one down just a tiny bit like that and then hold shift and take this handle and scale that down a little bit like that and now just repeat that process over and over again by pressing command J or control J repeatedly if you're on windows. And that's what we're going for right there. We wanna create that extruded appearance. So once that's done, let's select all of those objects. And I wanna deselect the white copy. So I'll hold shift and come over here to the layers menu, click on that to deselect it. Or you may have to click the object itself. Let me click on the white object. And there we go, now it deselects it. As long as you're holding shift. And then I will add these all together. So I'll come back up here to the Boolean operations and choose add. And the problem we have now, if you notice, there's some ridges in here because of these extra copies that we made. So to fix that, I'm just gonna grab my nodes tool and I'm gonna select these nodes where these ridges are. And make sure you don't select the first node and the last node, just select all of the nodes between them and then just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. And now they're gone. We have nice, a nice smooth line there. And I'm just gonna do the same thing real quick. I'm gonna come over to here to these problematic areas and just delete those ridges out of there real quick. So now that that's done, I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and create a background for the next steps that we're going to do here. I'm going to turn on snapping first, so let's click on that magnet icon. And I will snap to the top left corner and just click and drag down to the bottom right corner. And I will make this black. And I want to send this to the back of everything, so I'll just take this layer and just click and drag it down to the bottom like that. And then I'm going to take the black outline that's above it, which you can't see right now. And we're gonna apply an outline to that. So let's come over here to the stroke tab and I'm just gonna bring this slider up a little bit to apply a stroke. And I'll come back into the color tab. I wanna select the stroke fill and I just wanna give this outline a color. You can give it any color you want. I went with the color blue for the affinity designer theme. And I'll come back over here to the stroke tab and I'll just bring that out like that. Now, if you notice, we have a couple of problems here. Number one, the stroke is rounded. And number two, it's going inside of the black outline. We want the opposite of that. So let me make the join type a corner. And then the align, I wanna choose this last option that puts the stroke on the outside of the object like that. And then you can go and adjust the size or the width of the stroke as needed. And now we're gonna put a little light glare going in the middle of the text. If you notice what I did here, I have this uh, simulated light effect. So let's do that now. I'm gonna select the text object and I'm gonna duplicate it in the layers menu. Let's right click it and go to duplicate. And I will make this one, let me choose my fill color. I'm gonna make this one a light shade of gray, something like that. And then we're gonna create an offset. So let's come over here to the contour tool and then just click and drag this to the left a little bit just to create a little bit of an offset so it's a little thinner than the text beneath it and make sure to choose the corner contour type for this spot for this font specifically and once that's done we can bake the bake the appearance which basically just finalizes it and i'm going to grab the ellipse tool now and i'm going to draw an ellipse going over that let me make this red let me get rid of the stroke and then I will take the opacity of that and bring that down in half. And I want to center that on the page so it's aligned with the text. And let me just change the contour of the circle here. If you notice, we want, let me turn off snapping now. 
we want the contour of the circle to be somewhat, or the ellipse, to be somewhat consistent with the contour of the text. So just make sure to eyeball that. You don't want it too, you don't want it too flat like that or too rounded. So find a nice happy medium in there. I think that looks pretty good. And once you're happy with that, let me just choose the let me just choose a placement here. I have it going about halfway through the text. Then hold shift and click the gray text so that you have the oval or the ellipse and the text selected and choose the intersection option up here or intersect and now we will apply a linear gradient to this so let's go to the gradient tool which is located over here if you don't see it in your toolbar just press the letter g on your keyboard and that'll grab the gradient tool and let me make sure i have this hold on a second let me just make sure okay just wanted to make sure i had that selected and where where it says type up here choose linear and then choose the, the node over here on the right. And I'm going to take the opacity of this and bring this down to zero. And then we can just take this node and put it over here and take this node and put it up here and hold shift so that it locks it onto the vertical axis like that. And then you could use this center point in the middle to adjust the intensity of this effect. So I'm gonna bring it up a little bit so it's very subtle. And I think it looks a lot better that way. And the final effect would be this lens flare. Now this is just a PNG image that I created. I'll have a link in the description of the video to where you can download a copy of these. I created these a while back and put them on my website. So I'll give you the link. You can just download them, download them directly and just drag and drop them onto the canvas like I'm gonna do right here. So let me bring my folder on here. And there we go. We have these three different lens flares to choose from. I'm gonna choose flare number three. There's also a vector copy in there in case you wanna maintain the vector properties of everything you're creating here. I think it's easier to just use the PNG. So I'm just gonna take the PNG and drag and drop that onto the canvas and place it where I need it to be. And there we go. And just like that, we've created our 3D text effect with the lens flare going over it. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you wanna check that out. As always, thanks for watching.